Hello everyone, my name is Isaias Martinez. I am a junior here currently at West Texas A&M University studying or trying to get my bachelor's in psychology much like a lot of you guys are. I'm from a small town by the name of Brownfield, Texas. Commonly mistaken for Brownsville. Brownsville is super south and I'm nowhere near that. Brownfield is actually about 30 miles south of Lubbock. Small town, probably about 9,000 people give or take. A small high school, small town, everyone knows everyone. What's going on in the town goes this side of town, that side of town, super fast. Graduated with about, I think it was 99 students, maybe 100, but nothing compared to some of you guys. I'm sure y'all went to like 5A, 6A, graduated with a few hundred, if not a lot of 100 students in y'all's class. Um, I'm debating on where I want to go after I graduate college. I Location is a big one for me. I'm trying to get out of here. Thinking about Dallas, Metroplex area. My uncle lives in Hawaii, so I might just pack up all my bags, go back over there, and just never come back to the States. Some of the possible careers that I've been uh, thinking about, school counseling, school psychologist, and then educator slash coach. Um, just for a few reasons, our school counselors at my high school just honestly didn't care. We're from Brownfield. Brownfield's, it's literally a terrible town. You either do drugs, go to jail, or work at McDonald's, or you go to college. And if you go to college, you're one of those few people that make it out of that town. And that town I need to get out of very desperately. But school counseling there at Brownfield High School, when I was in school at least, I'm not sure, I can't speak on how it is now. When I was there, it was just terrible. Literally, you go into the counselor's office, ask for advice or help with school or academics, anything like that, and they'll just literally just brush you off. Oh, just go work harder. Go put your nose in the book. Like, it was so bad that I don't want any other kids going through what I went through in high school and what some of my classmates that needed more help than I did went through in high school because they're not in the same spot that I am. Um, I'm fortunate for... All the opportunities I've had to just be where I'm at today but school psychologists you know helping kids with their problems because I know a lot of kids that were going through it in Brownfield like I said you're either stuck in Brownfield or you make it out and if you're stuck in Brownfield that's not really a good thing because the drug rate in Brownfield the pregnancy rate in Brownfield it's just it's ridiculous the test scores in Brownfield are probably the lowest probably in the lowest of the state like it's so embarrassing um it just it's incredible and then an educator slash coach uh, i had some really great teachers that were coaches in high school um for example my track coach his name was coach hood he had the class college readiness um got me filling out all these scholarships and applying for tons and tons of different schools and grants just everything he was super helpful he was just that coach that was not just there to make his paycheck, not just there to get some wins under his name. He was actually there to help us get ready and prepare ourselves for the real world. And I feel like I have almost a calling to do that as well because I still text some of my coaches today like, hey man, what's up? How's it going? Hey, let's meet up if you're ever in town. So in each of these professions, school counseling, school psychology, educator, coach, um, you got to really, really build a relationship with these students because basically they're your kids. Like if you think about it, you see them eight hours a day, five days a week. And then if they do sports, that's another two to three hours a day for practice, weights, everything like that. So you're seeing these kids possibly up to 10 hours a day. Like you got to buy into these kids. You got to invest your time and effort into these students. Social psychology can help that in a few different ways because social, psycho social psychology obviously is how these kids think other people see them and that's how their behavior and their actions reflect um, but it can also you know be a negative in fields sometimes so you're working with a bunch of high school kids preparing them for the real world you can't just psych them out and just make them afraid to make friends or be like oh this person's watching me because he's a boss so I gotta be on tip top and then they mess up anything like that like I know when I was in high school, like coaches, obviously they do push you to be better, 
uh, majority it was just in sports. Oh, you can do better in sports. Oh, do this, lift weights, run more, do this, do that, eat right. Like, only, like I said, only a handful wanted you to actually succeed in academics. Because if you're an athlete in Brownfield, like the, they're gonna they're gonna make sure you pass so you can play your sport that you're a standout star in. Like they will make sure you pass, even if it's a C. They get you with a 70, you're good. Put on the report card, let them play the next six weeks. But social psychology, it's important to just integrate that into school. Now I'm going to talk about a few different social psychology concepts that I feel can be integrated into the fields that I've chosen my careers that I want to go in, that hopefully I do go into, um, especially just a few. Social status is defined as the extent to which we are viewed positively and esteemed by others. So that's in page 154 of our textbook. Uh, social status is really, really relevant to school counseling, school psychologists, and being an educator and coach. Because you're experiencing with a whole bunch of students, you know, social status. So say kids come back from Christmas and have like the nicest shoes or the nicest clothes. And maybe some families weren't able to provide that for their kids as much as they wanted to. So self-esteem is a real big deal. So kids could be making fun of them or clicks being like, oh, look at that guy. You know, just high school things, you know, kids being kids. So that's that's a very, very important thing to learn about and know how to work with that with students and high school kids uh self-esteem just goes hand in hand with social status you're getting picked on it's it just breaks you down so definition for self-esteem the positive or negative feelings that we have about ourselves that's in page 150 in our books um self-esteem is crucial during high school it's you're starting to compare yourself to each other you're going through puberty, you're hitting growth spurts, um, it affects your self-image greatly, man, and that's, you're comparing your kid to someone else's kid, and you're looking at him like, oh, why don't I look like that, oh, why don't I have facial hair, like, you break down, and it just starts coming in your head, and you just start to get down on yourself, oh, I'm not good enough, oh, he's, he's better than me, he's stronger than me, he's faster than me, in reality, when it's just puberty or genetics, he's hitting a growth spurt. And then the final one that I have picked, uh, the concept was stress. Um, the definition of stress is physical and psychological reactions that occur whenever we believe that the demands of a situation threaten our ability to respond to the threat. And that's in page 113. Stress just affects everyone differently from the get-go. Um, I could be stressing a little bit about a test when the kid next to me is losing his mind and having a nervous breakdown almost because he's just super stressed about it, but I know he's going to do better than me. But why is he more stressed? It just affects everyone differently, and you have to know how to react to it differently with each student or each situation that's brought up to hand about it or why they're stressing it or what is causing all this stress. Is it home problems? Is it school? Is it just you don't feel good? Like... There's, there's very many things that you have to be prepared for in the system that can just be thrown at you at any time. So you have to be prepared for everything. Be ready so you don't got to get ready. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rasko.